Okay, well, we've talked about a lot of different stuff. Um, that takes us into lesson number nine, uh, which is lifestyle. Okay, so um, we, we've talked about the different things. You know, we've talked about the basis of authority, which is, um, or basis of belief, I guess I should say, which is the Bible. We've talked about how you are saved. We've talked about who is God. Uh, we've talked about how to have uh, a handle on your finances, how to how to have good finances. Um, we've talked about what the church's functions are and, and, and how it outreaches. Um, we've talked about uh, conscience, and we've talked about... I'm missing one. Um, well, anyways, and we, we've talked about how, how to have a good conscience, and so that takes us inevitably to the question, so if I'm saved by grace, through faith, how should I live my life then? Um, and I do think it's important to understand books such as James. Um, you know, today we're going to look at um, how, how we know as a Christian what is right and what's wrong, uh, in a simple way. Um, but with that being said, you know, the book of James talks about true faith and the mark of true faith is works when somebody says that they that they believe in God but that then they don't do the things that he's commanded then they don't really believe once again the works don't save somebody okay but for those people who truly believe in God there is a change in their behavior pattern there's a, there's a change now I want to point out the fact that faith isn't just simply believing something Okay? Faith is a firm trust in God that is shown. It's it's a if you will, it's kind of like a position um, of how you um, live towards God, and it is always expressed through works. That's just the natural result. Um, it's like somebody who who drinks a lot; they will have depression eventually. See what I mean? Um, it's a natural result of it. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, Going to do, going to the main idea here. How how should a Christian live? Um, first off, um, there there's there's a very um, very interesting uh, process that people fall into sin by. Nobody just simply wakes up one day and says, "Oh wow, look, I I've fallen into a sin." Um, sometimes there are things that that um, creep up on us because we're not paying attention or because we're not listening to other people's input or those kinds of things. But um, with that being said, like let me, let me give you examples so it's not just obscure things I'm throwing at you. Um, it is possible to wake up one day and realize, wow, I've really spiritually I've really kind of declined. I I I, I gossip all the time. I, I I'm I'm complaining all the time. I I just don't know how I got there. That's possible because sometimes we see these um um there there'll be things in our life that we allow in that some, sometimes other people will try to warn us about that we don't listen to um, because we don't like the way it sounds um, and so we allow it into our lives um, but what I'm talking about is is where you are living boldly in a sin and you are justifying it that doesn't just happen on accident it's a process um, the first step uh, of the three stages of sin is the fight against the conscience. This is where you know it's wrong. Uh, I want to do this, but I don't feel right about doing it. Okay. Um, think of, for instance, um, you know, well, I'm just going to go buy the bar. I'm not going to drink. I'm just going to go buy it. Okay. And you know there's that check in your spirit. You shouldn't be doing this. No, there's nothing wrong with going with the, going to the bar. I'm just going to the bar. You know, there's, you're fighting that conscience. Or um, with sexual immorality. Um, you know you know that attractive girl is working today. You know, she's in that and she's in the office. And instead of just, you know, um, maybe going a different day or, or maybe just walking by without looking, you've got to go and you've got to talk to her. You, you know what I'm talking about. Um, or, oh, my wife's gone at work or whatever. I can, I can you know, get on the Internet. I mean, there's there's certain things where you feel that check in your spirit. You just feel that that, that that maybe it's not wrong, but it's it's just getting you to a gray area that's just not a good place to be in. Then the second stage is seeking to justify it. And this is where um, you 
have passed your conscience, now you're actually justifying the thing. It's not wrong because of this. Now, keep telling yourself that and you will believe it eventually. That doesn't mean everybody else will believe it, but eventually you will believe it. Um, and then the, the, then the third stage is living boldly in that sin. Um, I'll do it if I want, it's my right. Hey, I, I can do this, there's nothing wrong with this. You know, the, the conscience becomes seared. And we talked a bit in the last lesson about how to have a good conscience. But in this lesson, um, more of the lifestyle aspect of it. The last lesson was kind of the mind and the heart. This lesson is more of the actions and the added, not so much attitude, but mostly the actions. Um, but okay, so that gives us a very simple model. Um, I do want to read 1 Corinthians 6, uh, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 17. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All of their sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought, bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so basically, people kind of lean to one side or the other. One side says, we need to live exactly how the Jews lived in the Old Testament. Well, this is called legalism. It's where you lean on the things to save you. This is the kind of works that Paul is talking about. Um, the other side is where people claim that because they're saved, the grace aspect, that they don't need to do anything. And so they live however they want. But if you look, the Old Testament is a model for us. It's a model for us now as Christians. So what does that mean? That means you can't just live however you want. And James talks about this. If you are truly saved, you can't. You don't want. You don't live however you want. You live. Um, how, what does he say? True religion is this: to keep oneself unstained from the world. Of course, he says, you know, um, you know, caring for widows and orphans, the defenseless, those those who have nobody sticking up for them, and. Um, that. But anyways, um, <clears throat> there is definitely a process, and we and we always need to be careful. And when somebody else takes the time to give us input, even if they say it in the wrong attitude, even if they you don't like them as a person, always listen. Always listen. Um, at least with a grain, and take it with a grain of salt. You know, you don't have to necessarily believe everything that they say. Just analyze it and think: hmm, Is there a possibility of this being true, or do I appear as though that is true? See, because once again, sometimes it matters more what people perceive to be true than what is actually true. Um, at least in personal relationships, I should say. Um, but okay. Um, whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Okay? And um, so you have to live, uh, live God's way. Your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, that takes us to sin. Um, <clears throat> all sin, <clears throat> excuse me, all sin equally separates from God. Okay, this is a general principle. And sin is any failure to conform to God's character, to his nature. Um, and so, by nature, we are sinful. But then also, we do sinful things. Uh, because we're not God, and we don't, um, we don't respond to situations as God would. Um, so, there's that idea that all sin equally separates us from God. If you sin, it separates you from God. And if you live in sin, it, it, it builds a wall there where eventually your your disobedience will lead to disbelief. This is what Hebrews talks about. Um, not all sin is equal, though. Um, there are some sins that, that, that are strongly warned against more so than other ones. Um, for instance, making a big deal about tattoos, which is once again something that only applies to the, to the uh, law system, um, and that is not exactly what people always have the idea of tattoos as it translates to today. Okay, but um, and 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 then overlooking things like you know child pornography and that kind of stuff. There are some things that are worse than other things. Um, homosexuality is 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 traditionally called pretty bad, but it is important to note that um, Jesus didn't say that um, for the homosexual. Uh, 
it would be worse for or better for a millstone to be cast around their neck and thrown into the sea. He said that about those people who mislead children. Okay. So think about that. He didn't say it about homosexuals. He mentioned it about the people who mislead children. So, um, and then Christians are free from the law, yes, but just because one is free from the law does not mean that you should act as the lawless. And Paul talks about this. Um, freedom does not give excuse for living as lawless. I just said that Christianity is not about can I do this, but should I do this. Um, oftentimes, we, will, we as Christians will have the right to do something, especially American Christians. But the question we should really be asking is, is this a good thing for me to do? Um, should I do this? You know, um, Like the whole thing with, with the tattoos. Can you get a tattoo? Yes, you absolutely can get a tattoo. Should you do that? Well, that depends. Um, if you're in ministry, where you're in ministry at, um, what the mood of the culture is around you. Sometimes you don't do things and you give up freedom just for the sake of someone else. Sometimes you do that um, because you're trying to witness to them. You're trying to pull them into God's kingdom. Um, so before you at, say, think, or do, ask, first off, is my motivation to glorify God? Am I doing this from a place of worship to the Lord? Or will this hurt or benefit my witness? Will you hurt or benefit your witness? Okay, always ask this question. Excuse me. It's because sometimes we, we try to justify what we're saying, um, but it has no benefit to someone else. Excuse me. It has no benefit to God. And so if we're doing things always with the idea of trying to... Um, uh, glorify God, it will dictate our actions, where even if we do something wrong, you'll be with the right attitude. And, and uh, sometimes that's more important. Um, especially when you're trying to witness to people and they see that you have a pure heart, that's going to speak more than if you did all the right things with a bad attitude. Um, 1 Corinthians 10 uh, 30 th 30, 31 through 33. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Once again, the idea of trying to do things um, and, and not do things according to what would bring people into knowledge with God. You don't want to be the barrier between God and somebody. Well, uh, st what, is, what does Jesus say? Stumbling, uh, stumbling blocks will come, but woe to the person through whom it comes through, to, to whom it comes by. If you are being a stumbling block for someone else's salvation, really be careful about this. Um, give up freedoms for the for the sake of witnessing to people. You know, I'm I'm constantly dumbfounded by the amount of Christians who say dumb things because they have the American right of free speech. Sometimes you have to separate your American rights from your Christian rights, and you have to give up some of your American rights so that others can have a Christian right. Does that make sense? Um, so, same question after, is my motivation to glorify God? Is what's inside? And, and, and don't lie to yourself about this, because sometimes, oh no, my, I, I, I'm totally, uh, my motivation is to glorify God. You cannot say that you love God and not love your brother. That person is a liar. See what I mean? You have to you, you have to actually delve your heart. Be honest with yourself. You know, I'm doing this thing because it's the right thing, but deep down inside, deep down inside, I'm doing it because because I don't like that person. See what I mean? You, you have your you have your 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 surface problem, your surface um, attitude, and all this, but then you have like this root problem and this root attitude that's, that's going on. And uh, they build on each other to where you can even dumbfound yourself and kind of blind yourself to the reality of your attitude. Oh, no, I'm doing this with a good heart, but if you really analyze yourself, you'll realize, wow, I'm really not. James 4, or er, somewhere around James 4, he talks about not all should become teachers. Maybe it's James 3. But he says not all should become teachers because, you know, things like envy and, and jealousy and those kinds of things. Um, and, and, you know, if you stop and ask yourself as a teacher, if you're a teacher, wow, how many times have I taught trying to teach lessons, trying to teach knowledge, rather than trying to teach people? See what I mean? How many times have I done something for my benefit so that I would have a purpose in life, rather than um, trying to 
do something for someone else's benefit. This is a good test. Do, when you don't get pats on the back, are you okay with that? When, when somebody uh, doesn't handle your lesson very well, are you okay with that? So I mean, um, when somebody gets mad at you when you tried to help them, are you okay with that? You're doing it for their benefit. So is your motiva motivation to glorify God? A servant doesn't have the right to get mad and to get mad. Okay, remember that. If you are a minister, you don't have the right to get mad. Some people are going to reject you. You don't have the right to get mad. Um, so then the second question: Will this hurt someone else? A very, very important question. What effect will my actions have on others? Be, be real with yourself. It, it, can you, as a Christian, can you drink? Yes, absolutely. Can you get drunk? No. Um, however, is drinking, even that, just that little bit, is that going to negatively or positively affect somebody else? And and don't don't be naive here. Oh no, it's it's it, they just need to grow up and and, and no no. The Bible says if anybody has something against you. You need to go and go and make it right. Not if you have a problem with someone else, which means that if if somebody gets offended by something that you did, and you don't think that it's wrong, you can't say, "Oh well, they just need to get over it." Because the Bible, Jesus, by the way, not Paul, Jesus told you not to do that. Okay, so you need to go to that person and make things right. Um, you always have to ask, "Will this hurt someone else?" Um, not only that, but sometimes, like let's say you believe in casual drinking. And someone else just came out of, of drinking, and um, they, they they see you, and it, and it does shake them. It's going to shake them. Let me just spill the beans here. It's going to shake them. Um, once again, are you going to – who is benefited by that? You didn't need the alcohol to live, right? And they are now in a worse off place because they saw you do it. So once again, will this hurt someone else? Be willing to give up on things so that you can keep loving on a person. Love doesn't say love doesn't 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 keep record of, of, of right and wrong. It doesn't keep it doesn't remember the things suffered. Love love doesn't have selfish motives. Oh well what about me? Nobody's gonna watch out for me. I need to stand up for my rights. That's the world talking. That's not love. Love says, I'm willing to suffer a little bit. Remember, we're just talking about giving up on freedoms, not closing your mouth every once in a while, rather than just letting stupidity spew forth, not drinking publicly rather than, um, um, or maybe even um, being careful of how you purchase liquor and those kinds of things. Not that you have to act shady about it, and if you do act shady about it, that's obviously going to hurt your witness too, but once again, will this hurt someone else? Get past yourself. Life is not simply about how to please yourself and how to make yourself feel better about yourself. It, life is about others, and life is about God. Romans 14, 13 through 23 says, Therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another, one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, be, um, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus Christ, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. Excuse me. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not... Excuse me. By your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ uh, died. Therefore, do not let what you know is know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives his human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself uh, and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Obviously, that last verse there is, is taken strongly out of, out of context there, that everything that does not come from faith is sin. But um, I digress. We'll talk about that maybe some other day. Uh, but for now, it's not really my point. My main point is just simply that, will this hurt someone else? Matthew 22, 37-40. Um, says, 
Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So once again, uh, it does need to be um, your concern about whether or not this is going to show love to someone else or not. And then the third question, do I have um, do I have to justify myself? Are you doing something that, that, that you have to justify yourself before someone else? Do I have to make myself feel better about doing it? And, and do I have to make others feel better about me doing it? Um, surrender freedom for others' benefit. I kind of already touched on this, um, so I'm not going to sully it. Or sully is not the right word. I'm not going to uh, belabor it. Um, I'm just going to read 1 Corinthians uh, 9, 19 through 23. Um, all, though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. And, you know, the book of the book of First Corinthians, Paul is talking about giving up freedoms um, for the sake of someone else. You know, oh, I have knowledge, but that knowledge is lacking love. Oh, I have, I have, um, um, you know, I, I I have my gift of the spirit that I'm misusing in the body. This is how you correctly use it. Uh, I have, um, you know, everything is awful for me. Yeah, but not everything is of benefit. Um, to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I have, might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I, might, that I may share in its blessings." And be careful. I know sometimes we get we get bad attitudes towards televangelists and whatnot who say things like, "I saved someone" or whatever. It's it's a general understanding that the, that God is the one who actually saves them. They're just talking about um, the process of witnessing. Okay. Even Paul said, "I might save some," or he said, "Follow after me as I follow after Christ." See what I mean? So be real careful about being too quick to be uh, condemning or judgmental. Um, Especially as a Christian, we should be marked by our mercy and our patience. Um, remember, we aren't supposed to love justice. Er, yeah, we're supposed to love mercy and act justly. Okay, Micah six eight. Um, okay, so let's talk about the mouth. James three one through two strongly warns um, about this. Um, and obviously the Christians are trying, you know, getting frustrated and taking their frustrations out on each other and out on others too, thinking about whether they should, you know, uh, rise up or not. But James three kind of addresses that. Um, you know, when you're irritated, sometimes you'll you'll lash out at other people, um, or you know, other Christians or, or other people outside whoever it's respons whoever's responsible for it. Um, but um, it's important to note that James called people uh, to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face the trials. Um, so, James 3, 1 through 12, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who, we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Now, keep this in mind. Um, this also applies to people who try to teach others, you know, just um, out on the streets and stuff. This definitely does still apply, and they're going to see you as a teacher, even though you may not think, oh, I'm teaching in a church. That makes sense? Um, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey as we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and, it's set, it, it, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth came praise and cursing. My brother and sister, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water uh, flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So, 
And always watch out with what you're saying. Matthew 12. Um, Matthew 12, 33 through 37. You know, some of these verses are so so much looked over because they just don't say what people want to hear. Uh, make a tree good and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad, for a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. From the abundance of the mouth, uh, the heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, and then Romans 12:9. As you can see, the Bible has a lot to say about how to properly live. Um, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. So, are you building up or tearing down? The, with the words that you say, are you building up or are you tearing down? Um, when you say or do something, you shouldn't. Um, you shouldn't make amends. Not you shouldn't make amends, but when you say or do something that you shouldn't make amends. Um, Always acknowledge you're wrong without making justification. What we do when we apologize, and we talked about this in the conscience lesson, is we give qualifiers. I was wrong, but you were wrong too. You know, oh, I did this. If 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 maybe if you wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. You know, we give little qualifiers. When you say or do something you shouldn't, just make amends. Look, I did this. I did it with an with a bad attitude or whatever. Um, I'm I'm sorry. Please forgive me. So. Um, or if it was just something that was misunderstood, look, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I swear I did not mean it like that. Um, this is what I, what I meant. And um, so, if you have anything nice to say, don't. Say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's a, just a general principle of, of speaking. Sometimes, especially in the American church, we get this idea that if it comes to our head that it's good, we should just blurt it out. No, when it comes to your head, you should analyze it against the Word of God and say, is this actually good? <laughs> Too many times we speak. I mean, usually our problem is that we don't. Um, they won't keep, keep quiet when we should. So if you always feel the need to say something, you are probably wrong. Um, in fact, Proverbs says that in the abundance of words, there is foolishness. Basically what that means is, have you ever counseled somebody and you're sitting there talking the whole time? Counselors are supposed to listen, not speak. Yes, there is some talking that happens, but when you are doing the majority of the talking, you are actually not counseling anymore. You are simply advising. Um, uh, with that being said, um, when you s speak too much, eventually something stupid will come out. So uh, gossip is um, talking or listening about someone else. Oh, when you're when you're speaking, always ask: Is this necessary? Kind and good. Let me give you an example of good talking about someone else. Um, my son won uh, best in show at the fair. Okay, so I mean you haven't gossiped about anybody. This is gossiping. Just wanted to let you know, I'm not gossiping, but it usually has some kind of a qualifier like that, especially if they know that you don't like gossip. However, if you are a person who likes gossip and always feeds that, well then they're not even going to probably give qualifiers. But it's going to go something like this. Yeah, the, the pastor's son, they're, they're really having a hard time with him. What was your purpose in saying that? It wasn't necessary, it wasn't kind, and it wasn't good. See what I mean? Um, you don't need to be talking about the pastor's son and what problems he's, they're having with him, right? I, would, I think we would all agree that this is not a profit to anyone. Um, so, is it necessary, kind, and good? Second, would you like others to share uh, such things about you? Do you want other people to be talking about you in that same way? Then you shouldn't be talking about and talking to them. What did Jesus say? The golden rule, um, you know. And, and and with that in mind, um, those who gossip to you will gossip about you. Always remember that. There's no such thing as a as a loyal gossip. Eventually, the conversation will lead um, to, about you too. Um, gossip, gossip and complaining destroy your unity with the body. Eventually, if you continue to gossip and complain. 
uh, which by the way gossip and complaining go hand in hand I know we mentioned complaining in another lesson and we are mentioning gossip here but they do go hand in hand um, it, if you are a person who gossips and complains first off you will feel detached from the rest of the church second off you won't have a direction um, spiritually speaking with the church you'll just kind of feel like you're there uh, and third off you will very strongly um, not experience the move of the Holy Spirit at least not like you used to and it will continue to decline because you're just gliding on the fumes of it um, so uh, gossip and complaining destroy your unity <sighs> uh, gossiping really just is an ugly thing Always follow the principle, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And, you know, some people really are oblivious to the fact that they're gossiping. Just analyze what you say, and that shouldn't happen. Um, so lifestyle, how to know what and what not to do. Proverbs 13, 20. Um, you know, and it is okay to have counselors. Not people who tell you what you want to hear, but people who you know will speak the truth. Okay. There's a difference. We, we surround us with people who tickle us. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you and amen. Blessed are you. But then they say something we don't like. <gasps> that can't possibly from, be from God because I didn't like it. See what I mean? It, there's a difference. And our attitude definitely does need to be one that, that's one that's willing to be um, taught. Proverbs 13, um, 20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Ever heard the saying, you are what you eat, or birds of a feather, flo feather flocks together? It's kind of that, you know, you, 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 bad company corrupts. Oh, well, Jesus hung out with people. Yes, he did go hang out with, with people like that, but he didn't have them as close friends, okay? There's a difference. Jesus didn't avoid the world. He spent a lot of time with the world, but he didn't make close friends and, 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 and compatriots out of people who weren't, I mean, who were like that, okay? Um, so... Uh, you know, and, and, and learn from Jesus. Uh, he had Judas, who, uh, that guy was a snake in the grass, but yet, he gave him the chance, and he, uh, he tried to teach him. And, uh, so, uh, Proverbs 14, 7 says, Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. When you hang around people like that, eventually you will become like that. Do not those who plot evil go astray? This is verse 22. But those who plan what is good find love and faithfulness. Do not those who plot evil go astray? Um, uh, 15.24 The path of life leads, leads upward for the prudent to keep them from going down to the realms of death. Of the dead, sorry. Um, Romans six twelve through fourteen, and I encourage you to go and read these study, read these verses that I'm that I'm reading to you, um, and then study the passages around it. See see the kind of flow of the conversation, um, or of the argument, I guess I should say. Romans um, six twelve through fourteen. Um, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourselves to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been um, brought from death to life. One verse says, do not give opportunity for your flesh. What, what does that mean? If your wife's home and you have internet, don't be at the home. It's not tempting yourself, okay? It's don't tempt yourself. Um, don't give an opportunity to be able to sin. Oh, well, I have I have data on my phone, so it's really hard for me to not look at porn. Okay, leave your phone with your wife. Get a phone that doesn't have data. Uh, cut down to the bare minimum of data, so that way, if you use too much of your data, you're going to fill it in your pocket. Because, you know, it's going to charge you. Um, so, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness, for sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. So what can we learn from this? If you are someone who claims to be a Christian but then justifies your actions simply because you are a Christian, say that you can do anything you want, you are very simply not a Christian because faith is more than just a belief in God. Even the, even the demons believe in God. Um, acknowledging something's presence isn't the same as trusting in that presence. Um, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Um, so... 
Legalism says if you do everything just right, you will be saved. You have to do the things commanded in Leviticus, and you have to do them to the letter. You have to, uh, you know, do this and that. You have to, you, you, maybe even to this extent, um, you have to, you have to act perfect. Dress, you have to dress just right. Um, you don't necessarily have to have to only do the works of the law. You do have to believe in God, but you just have to be perfected in works. See what I mean? They, they still have the emphasis on works playing a role of salvation, which they don't. Works are just the natural um, conclusion of faith. Eventually, for someone who truly trusts in God, their heart will be changed by the Holy Spirit, and they will find their living patterns changed. But when you justify the things that you're doing, see what I mean? Um, and by the way, our conscience will not be our guide. We cannot say, I will know ultimately if what I'm doing is right or wrong, just simply by whether or not my heart agrees or disagrees. But Jeremiah already covered that. Your heart is very wicked. Okay, your your heart is very wayward. It's going to go from thing to thing. You know, it, it, it's 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 something that, that cannot be trusted. And reason can't either, because once again, sin lives in you. Okay, um, and the Holy Spirit only brings to mind things that are there. Does that make sense? Uh, I that's a conversation for another day. Um, basically, stay in the Word and stay in church. And that's what it comes down to. Stay in prayer. And when you commune with God and his people, you, you're going to be able to, to have direction in this. Um, so we're not talking about legalism. Legalism is, is about salvation. Um, the same as our good works don't save us, they don't keep us saved either. I had this idea that I was saved by grace, but then I had to keep, I had to do all the right things or else I'd lose that salvation. You, salvation isn't so fickle that you can lose it. Okay, You can give away your salvation, but you can't lose it. Like, you're, like it's your keys or something. I lost my keys. Philippians um, 1, 6 says, um, what happens is we decide to, sin, to keep on doing a sin, and it hardens us. That's disobedience. And then, eventually, throughout the course of this, it's hardens to the point where we no longer believe. Then we give our salvation away. Okay. So, Philippians 1, 6, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus, we have we believe that God is is doing a work in our bodies, but we don't always see that, do we? We have we, we just have to have to believe in, that God's doing work that we're not able to see. That that is technically uh, faith. Um, so Hebrews twelve two. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, um, work on what God is convicting you of now, while while focusing thankfully on Christ. You know, sometimes when God starts convicting us, we try to do everything that He's everything that, that that we can think of that we're doing wrong at the same time. Rather, just focus on what God is convicting you of now. And uh, when I say focus on it, I mean um, try to stop doing it, obviously, but your focus is going to be on God. Um, you veer towards what you focus on. Are you focusing on God or are you focusing on that sin? Um, so focus, thankfully, on Christ, um, but do work on that thing that God is convicting you of. I really need to stop lying. you know. So then when you lie, you go and apologize for it. You ask for forgiveness, and you tell, tell the person that you lied. Um, and you attempt to keep your mouth shut every time that you uh, lie. You don't have to measure up to other people. Um, you, when you compare yourself to someone else or to yourself, that this is just bad. In fact, Paul even warns about this. When you are comparing yourself by yourselves, it's not wise. You don't have to fit someone else's standard. Remember, we're, we're meeting God's standard, not somebody else. So if you're if you're going to one of those churches that tries to make it where you have to dress just right and you have to do this and that, you know, it's important to note that, that in Paul's day they didn't wear suits and ties to, to the services either. In fact, it, it appears as though they wore whatever they, they had. They didn't even really dress up for it because the issue wasn't wasn't about the clothes. Okay, it was about um, it was about God. So Christians don't mess up, but they keep getting up. Okay. Just keep getting up. 
Don't give up and don't get frustrated. Yes, you are going to mess up. Surprise! You are still a person. Okay? Just because God has saved you does not mean that you cease to be human. You, you do need to keep that in mind. Um, a life of sin habits is undone day by day. What happens is we live um, we live with something in our lives for our whole lives, and then we expect for it to just be gone overnight. That happens to very few people. The majority of people have to face it day by day, and sometimes face it until death. Um, but when on the resurrected body, you're not going to care one way or another. Um, it's always easier to get into sin than it is to get out. Remember that. It's very easy to get into porn. I mean, especially nowadays. There's internet everywhere. Um, but it's very difficult to get out of it. And it does do wreck wrecks havoc on your spiritual life and your physical life too um, the reward is worth the struggle faith is believing what you don't see remember uh, Moses gave up um, the comforts of Egypt um, for the for the for the troubles of, of leading the people um, I don't see that I'm different I don't think I'll ever change these are things not said in faith because your trust isn't in God your trust is in the reality around you Doubt is having faith in anything other than God. It's that simple. Um, and faith is simply trust. Think of it like that. Um, it, it could, I could go more into what it is, but hopefully that that easy definition will help. Your faith is in the work of Christ, in the work Christ did, not your inability to reproduce perfection. Okay, what does that mean? It, well, it means this. You don't. You don't simply, um, you don't have faith because you have become perfect. You don't have faith because every time that you, um, every time that you pray or whatever, it's answered. This is this would mean that your faith is in yourself or in the thing. You have faith because Christ, you trap, you trust God because God died for you. See what I mean? Your job is to seek after Him continually in all things. His job is already done and still in effect justifying you and perfecting you okay allowing sin um, is dis disobedience disobedient leads to disbelief I mentioned that that's um, kind of Hebrews summated if you want to say that um, so urgently find and deny the lust of the flesh and passion of the flesh uh, overeating you know eating is in a sin but when something has dominance over you when something has mastery over you then it becomes it becomes bad for you um, overeating you know I have a hard time with, with pastors saying how you shouldn't live according to the lust of the flesh and their their guts hanging out you know a mile and a half you know if 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 you're gonna tell somebody to control the lust of the flesh why don't you cut down on the food there and control the lust of your flesh you know what I mean uh, oversleeping which just for is a, is a hotbed for laziness it's just a matter of time before um, you become lazy if you're oversleeping um, get six to eight hours you know you know you'll know what your body needs but try sacrificing some sleep sometimes and instead uh, spend it on prayer it won't kill you or if it does I mean it was in the service of God, so I mean, worse things have happened, right? Better than dying of old age of Alzheimer's or something like that. I mean, of all the things to die of. Uh, not going to work on time, uh, doing things that feel good over, over what's right, uh, pornography, lying, fighting. These are things that, that, that um, are would, we would consider lusts and passions of the flesh. Christians are not supposed to live according to that. You know, I'm always dumbfounded by people who... You know, Christianity bond, binds people, and Christianity this and Christianity that. Christianity is about being free. It is about having life to the fullest, more abundantly. It's about not having and not having these things bind you anymore. It's about sleeping well at night. It's about knowing your purpose in life. It's about having peace and comfort. It's about God. So just because um, you know you're religious, if you will, that that. That means you don't get to have fun in life? No, it means that you don't have to pretend to have fun by getting drunk all the time, waking up with a headache, and, and by the way, with a lot of money missing from your bank account because of how much you drank. See, that's not, that's not being losing out on all the fun. That's having more fun. I'm actually conscious to remember the fun that I have. I get to go bowling with my family, and you know what? I remember it. And when, when I wake up the next morning, I feel well-rested. And I don't feel guilty about anything. I didn't do anything stupid. I don't do any, didn't do anything that I don't remember. See what I mean? And, but hey, yeah, that's really losing out on the fun there. Um, is it found in the Bible or in agreement with the Bible? 
For instance, marijuana is not in the Bible. It does never says anything about marijuana. But it says about uh, things having control over you. It says about things... Um, and, oh, no, it doesn't have control over me. Try try quitting it then. If you try quitting it and you can't... Oh, no, no, I, I can't. I just decided not to. So, okay, here's a little test. Give it up for a month. Just give it up for a month. How big of a problem was it for, Was it after the fact? Keep a journal of how difficult it is. And at the end of that month, ask yourself, does this thing have control over me? If you can go a month without it, chances are it doesn't have that big of an influence in your life. But with that being said, um, it also says not to do things that... Um, you know, who is foolish, the person who gets drunk, you know, and, and, and drinking is a lot like drugs. I mean, some people disagree about this, but ultimately it does the same thing. You are no longer in full control of your body. Um, you do things that you don't remember. Um, there's, there's negative effects to your physical body, um, harmful effects. And some people um, try to justify um, things like marijuana because, oh, it has some, some it may have some, some positive effects to your body. You know what else is good for fighting off cancer? Exercise. Not eating processed foods. Uh, not eating sh a bunch of sugars and fats. Um, eating a lot of, lots of fruits and vegetables. I mean, these are all things that are really good for cancer without the need of marijuana. Not only that, but I mean, there are other ways. Like for those, oh, wine, wine, is, wine helps my body. Yes, it can in, in certain doses, yes. However, the dose, are you drinking it in those doses? And also, in, with today's modern technology, you can't find anything else that will do that exact same thing? I'm just saying. Um, so is it in agreement with the Bible? You can read the whole Bible through and, and know every word, but not understand what it's saying. It's not good enough to simply know the words on a page. You have to understand the words on the page. Okay, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Okay, the Holy Spirit gave it to men to write in the first place. The Holy Spirit can help it to make sense in you. Um, it's called, um, well, it's in, it's in the course of hermeneutics, but I can't remember um, what it's called. It's basically the Spirit's interaction in, in the process of understanding the Bible. Um, so, is it in agreement with the Bible? Is it, is it a biblical thought? You know, there are some things that, that society at large deems as wrong that aren't in the, the, the law of the Old Testament. Does that mean that, that, that God condones these things that people are against? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It simply means that by, by having a, a good conscience, you would know the right from the wrong. Um, and I mean, it's not a, supposed to be an exhaustive list for all time. It was just meant to, uh, to show the need for Christ. So... Um, I cannot emphasize that point enough. Is it found in the Bible or is in agreement with what is found in the Bible? Um, smoke marijuana is not in agreement with what is found in the Bible. Getting drunk is not in agreement with what is in the Bible. Okay. Um, uh, overusing your pain medications. This is not in agreement with what is found in the Bible. Um, Cheating on your taxes. This is not in agreement with what is in the Bible. Okay, so is it found in the Bible or is it agreement with what is found in the Bible? Would Jesus have done the same thing in your shoes? Genuine question. Would he have? Oh yeah, I think no. But seriously though, Matthew ten. I'm going to stop uh, here in a minute. Matthew ten thirty eight says, um, "Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me." So whatever you do, do it to glorify God and show love to others. Whatever you do, always do it to show love to others. Ephesians, um, um, five eight through twenty one. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as Children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. This is why it is said, Awake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful now, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. See, just because we are free from the law doesn't mean we should doesn't mean we should live as the law lists. 
making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, this is after, by the way, he said in, in the beginning of of Ephesians chapter two, where he said, "Faith is by grace through faith." Um, we are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from ourselves; it is a gift from God. After he said this, he told them what to do. See, once again, faith followed by works. So, um, so we're gonna stop there. We'll pick up next week with uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, especially as it applies to the lifestyle. So.